welcome. I'm Laura Live and I'm a Storm Yoga. This is going to be part G in the series of yoga for absolute beginners. Let's get started. We're actually going to start standing today. So come to your mat. I encourage you for today's practice to use a yoga block if you've got one. Um, if you don't have one, then you can certainly use something else like, for example, uh, a box or a book that just happens to be a similar dimension to a yoga block and that is sturdy enough that you could put some weight on it without it collapsing. Um, or if you want to get a yoga block, they're really cheap. A lot of times if you get like a starter kit with a yoga mat, the block will come with it. So it's really, they're very lightweight. They're, you know, kind of convenient to have around if you're going to be practicing more yoga. But we will use this today. So G is for grounding. We're going to focus today on grounding into the ground and then finding balance within that. So I'm going to show you some standing balance poses that are really basic standing balance poses. But we're going to start with just standing, which we've done in many of the previous videos. But let's have the feet about hip distance apart. We're going to think about grounding down through the feet. We stand all the time and don't really think about it. Um, you know, we sometimes we'll lean one hip, lean to one hip and bend a knee um, or whatever, but we want to try to get symmetrical. And then in addition, we want to think about actually rooting or grounding our feet into the floor, which charges up the muscles of the legs. And actually that allows the rest of our body to extend a little bit if we ground with the base of our body. So from here, take a moment, just lift your toes, spread them as much as you can, spread them wide. So we wanna put them back down now lightly, but spread apart with no weight on the toes. And then see if you can feel that your feet are more than just one spot on the floor. Imagine you've got four corners to your feet, so you can feel the outer ball of the foot, the inner ball of the foot, and then even your heels. See if you can feel the outer and inner heels and then push down into four corners of each foot. As you do that, you'll notice the muscles in the legs kind of start to engage a little bit. See if you can let the legs engage, but keep the knees a little soft. So we don't want to dramatically bend them, but we just don't want to have the knees locked or the kneecaps pushed back. And then from here, reach the arms out and up. Maybe look up and then bring your palms together in front of the heart. Press those palms, have a little energy between the palms as well. And so we just feel like we're a little more energetically standing. Our muscles are working and you might even just feel a bit strong here, grounding through the feet, pressing the palms, feeling upright. And now we're going to work towards being a little bit balanced. So you can let go of the hands in front of the heart. Keep, shift your weight slightly to the right foot and see if you can bring your left knee up into the chest. We actually did a little bit of balance practice in part B of this series and this is really all we did is we just practiced picking up the one leg. From here, see if you can feel all four corners of the foot that's standing. Steady your gaze at a single point ahead of you. And then we're going to take the left foot back down and we're just going to switch sides. So this is very basic getting used to balancing. If you need to be near a wall to practice balancing, by all means, go for it. So let yourself be somewhere where you could put your hand out and catch your balance if you need to at a wall. See if you can bring your right knee in. Now, I think I've mentioned this before, but there are three things that we use when we balance. One is just our inner ear, so our sense of equilibrium. One is our gaze. So if we can steady our gaze at a single point, that's going to help us to find balance. But the third thing is feeling the floor underneath us. When we take one foot off, it becomes harder. So we have to really focus on that one standing foot and notice that it's more than just one piece, but there's actually different parts there that we can ground down into our mat with all the parts. We're going to go to tree pose next. So this is a, a yoga pose that we practice a lot. It's called rikshasana. 
Um, that's the name of it. So we're going to start on the right foot. And the goal here is to bring the sole of the left foot to the right leg. You might start with just baby steps here. So you're going to turn your left leg out a little, left toes to the floor, and then left heel to the ankle or shin. And you've still got your foot on the floor, but it's going to be a little more work to ground into that right foot. Now, if you want to go a step beyond, see if you can bring the sole of your left foot all the way to the inner calf. Press your palms together in front of the heart. Breathe, steady your gaze, and just see if you can find your balance here. Root into the standing foot, and if you can, if you feel strong, reach the arms up into the air, and it should feel like those arms are growing out of the rest of your body, so we're grounding with the foot to extend through the arms like branches of a tree. And then let's switch sides. So we're going to come with the left foot down and start just turn the toes out a little bit. Maybe the heel comes to your calf and just find that. Maybe palms together in front of the heart. And then if you can go the next step, and again, be near a wall if you need to, take the sole of your foot to your calf. The knee is open to the side, so it's not pointing in front of you. We want the sole of the foot to line up with the verticality of the leg. And then maybe root down or ground down through that left foot. And see if you can reach the arms up, find some extension. You might even feel the core start to engage, and that is helpful as well. All right, and then take that foot down. And then maybe shake out the legs for a moment. Um, so ultimately, we want this pose, and you can try this again if you feel like you can go a little further, standing on the right foot. Ultimately, we start to use the hands to bring the sole of the left foot all the way above the knee to the thigh. Um, now, we don't want to use the knee as sort of like an intermediate stopping point, just because we don't want to push the foot against the knee from the side. The knee is a joint, it's more fragile than our long bones in our leg. Um, so it's just not safe to put pressure against the knee from the side. So we can try the other leg and you can go back to sole of the foot to the calf. Or again, if you're feeling like going a little further, depending on your practice and you know your balance level and your flexibility and all of that, maybe see if you can bring the sole of the right foot to the upper inner thigh. And now we're pressing down with our left foot, but we're pressing the right foot into our left leg, and then we're pressing the left leg back against the right foot. So there's a sense of connection and engagement between our body parts. And then take that down. All right, shake out your legs. We're gonna to start to use the block here. We're going to work on warrior three and half moon pose, which again are two very common basic standing balance poses you'll find in a lot of yoga classes. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to just stand. You can stand in the center of your mat here. We're going to take this to a forward fold. So remember, our forward fold is Uttanasana. You can have the feet about hip distance apart here. And then we're going to bring our fingers to the shins, take a nice flat back, Arda Uttanasana, or half forward fold. But you've got a really nice long spine, flat back, head reaches away from the tail. Now we're gonna add in our block. We're gonna put our block under our fingers and kind of under our nose here. What the goal is, is that we're using the block to make our arms as long as our legs. So that if we put our hands on our block here, our spine is long and we've got a lot of right angles. So from our leg to our torso is a right angle, from our torso to our arms is a right angle, and the back is flat and the head reaches forward just like Ardha Uttanasana. And now we'll get a little interesting with it. We're gonna stand on the right foot lift the left leg up. So you're going to bring it behind you. Try to keep your hips level. Ground into the right foot and into the hands in the block and reach the heel back and the head forward. Again, if you need to be near a wall, go ahead and find a wall. But the idea is we're trying to level out with the floor. Avoid dropping your head so we can reach the head forward and look you know, to the floor or maybe a little forward, but not way up. Okay, so here's the challenge. Can you start to pick the hands up off the block and keep everything else? Maybe even bring the palms together in front of the heart. This is warrior three. Head and heel, reach away from each other. Take your hands back to the block. Take your foot back to the floor. Let's do the other side. 
hands under, they should be right under the shoulders so that your arms are vertical, same as your legs are vertical. Ground into your left foot, so before you even think of lifting the right foot, charge up this left leg, feel all the corners of that left foot, pick up the right leg and see if you can go slow. So you're kind of just gonna move it behind you. Try to keep the leg as straight as possible. Push through the heel. And look, it may not get that high today. It's okay. The goal is to get it as high as the hip without bending the knee. But if it doesn't come that far off the floor, don't worry. Reach through the heel. And I know you can't really even see it back there. So who knows? Don't worry. Now, see if you can. Push through your lifted foot as if it were standing on something or pushing against a wall behind you. And then slowly try to pick up your fingers and press your palms together in front of the heart. Reach through the head, really push through that heel. So imagine you are grounding even your lifted foot. Fingers back to the mat, uh, block, feet back to the floor. Let's go ahead and take a forward fold here. Soften your knees. Just give yourself a moment to dangle. You can let your hands come to the floor or grab your elbows, but let the knees be soft. Breathe. Hmm. Maybe loosen up the back of the neck a little bit here. And then bend the knees, relax, release the elbows, and let's roll up to standing. Shake out the legs a little if they need it. And we're going to work into half moon pose. We're gonna start a very similar way. So we're gonna fold. We're gonna take the hands to the block. We're gonna reach the head forward. We're gonna stand on the right foot and lift the left leg up. So same thing as we just did. Reach through the heel, reach through the head. And but when I say reach through the heel, when we, okay, so you can put your foot back on the floor. When we push into the floor with the foot, We've got something to push against. When the foot goes into the air, we don't have anything to push against, but we want to imagine that we do. So we want to lift that left leg and push it back as though it were pushing into something. Now, from here, we're gonna take the right hand off the block, but we're gonna keep, oh, actually, I'm sorry, the other way around. We're gonna keep the right hand on the block. We're gonna slide it a little to the right, and we're gonna take the left hand to our left hip. Now, we've still got one hand on the floor, yay. We're gonna see if we can just turn, 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 turn. So we're turning the shoulders and the hips and the leg and everything is turning. Keep reaching through the head and through the heel. And then the full pose, you would take your top arm up. And then take your hand back to your waist, bring your foot back to the floor, and let's do the other side. So they bring the block back to center, and again, it should be far enough away that when your hands are on the block, your shoulders are right over your wrists. Reach through the head, reach through the tail, and this time we're gonna stand on the left foot and pick up the right foot. So do this slowly. You need to kind of transfer your weight to that right foot, but try not to change the shape of the body as you do that. So we're still really facing the floor now. Now we're gonna take the block and just slide it a little bit over to the left. And this is just gonna help keep the left hand right under the shoulder. Take your right hand to your hip and then start to turn, turn. So we're twisting. Let your shoulders try to stack. Let your hips try to stack. This is actually hard to do slowly. So if you're feeling wobbly, don't worry, just practice. Reach through your lifted heel and then see if you can take the top arm up. And if this doesn't happen today, do not worry about it. Keep your hand on your hip if you need to, especially if it helps keep your hips and shoulders stacked. Take your hand back to your hip, come back. Take your foot to the floor and let's let that go. Forward fold. Bend the knees and roll on up to standing. Take your shoulders back and down. And those are some of our basic standing poses. A couple more. So um, Eagle is another standing balance pose, which I actually demonstrated in a really short supplement um, video, which I'll link here. Um, and that one's just like a supplement to our E of the series. And then another one I'm gonna show really quick is called Dancer Pose. And this one, we're gonna start standing up. We're gonna stand on the right leg, but we're gonna just bend the left knee behind and bring the foot behind us. And if you can, see if you can reach back for the foot. Now, if this is difficult on your hamstring or you can't do it, don't worry, do the best you can. 
If you can reach that foot, then the right arm reaches out, and then the goal is to turn this almost into a back bend by pulling the heel away from the hip. Do the best you can, but keep your chest and your heart and your head and everything upright so it's not folding down at all. It's just lifting the foot. And then go ahead and slowly take that foot back to the floor, and we're going to do the other side. All of the same principles apply here. We're grounding into our standing foot, so we want that standing leg, now it's going to be the left, to be really strong, and all of our weight is moved over the left leg as we start to bend the right knee, and then see if you can reach back with your right hand and grab that foot. And if you're like me, sometimes I'll get a cramp in the hamstring, and then just back out of it, don't worry, but if that's feeling okay, take your left arm straight out in front of you, and then push the foot into the hand to lift it a little higher. And the action that we're doing here is similar to bow pose, which we did um, on the floor, on our bellies on the floor with both feet at the same time. And then go ahead and release out of that and shake it all out. All right, now sometimes these poses get mixed in to a flow sequence. So that will be coming up in future, but go ahead and practice these standing balance poses on their own, just so your body can start to get used to the shape and the feel. Thank you again so much for joining me for this practice today. Please subscribe so and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is gonna be posted. Like, share, comment. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for practicing with me and namaste.